Start game now. Do you know what Shinobi does on his day off? He heads to the Atari Lynx and he plays a round of Ninja Golf. Welcome everybody to another edition of the No Swear Gamer where we have just hit 50 episodes. Hooray, hurrah, and what better way to celebrate than with a round of Ninja Golf for your Atari 7800 Pro System. I absolutely love this box art. I do like cheesy humor and this is chock full of it. You got this ninja whose eyes are as dark as night. Those are some serious dark eyes there and a serious sword as well. But I absolutely love how he has some golf tees around him and a couple of golf balls hanging like they were a couple grenades. And check out the nunchuck hanging off of his golf clubs. How awesome is that as he just is ready to play a round of golf in the pale moonlight. Very, very cool. Checking out the back shows us some action shots. I think they were finally getting uh, kind of a good hold on what they should do with the back of the boxes by the time this came out. This looks a lot better than some of the early releases with one single screenshot and not much of a description. But yeah, this looks like it could be a good time. So let's go ahead and take our copy of Ninja Golf, put it into our Atari 7800 Pro system and see if this one is worth a round or not. Ninja Golf is from 1990, and according to Moby Games, it was developed by Blue Sky Software, who's most famous for the Vector Man series on the Sega Genesis. It is a single-player only game where you play a ninja who is trying to attain the status of Master Ninja. Your master has just informed you that your 10 years of training is almost complete, but before you complete it, you must complete 9 holes of Ninja Golf. That's right. Why not 18? Because you don't need a back 9 in Ninja Golf. Are you kidding me? When you start the game, you can see a little map that shows the golf hole that you are on. And your job, first of all, is to aim your shot with a little blinking circle that continually travels in your line of aim. Your goal is to hit the button when the flashing dot is right where you want your ball to land. I found that hitting it a little early helped me. I don't know if it's because the game has a delay or because I have a delay that if I tried to hit it right at the edge, I ended up hitting it way too close to me because once it gets to the edge, it returns right next to you. After you hit the ball, your ninja will make a straight path running, jogging to the ball. Why no golf carts? Because you don't need a golf cart in Ninja Golf, but there's going to be several hazards in your way depending on what type of ground you're traveling on. So it doesn't matter where your ball lands so much as the path that you are taking to the ball. So even if you hit it from the fairway on the fairway, if your line of travel goes through a body of water or a sand trap, you are going to have to travel and defeat the enemies there. Once you do that, it basically turns into like a side-scrolling action game where you are going to have to defeat different en enemies depending on the game's difficulty and how far you are in the game. Now, the game does offer four levels of difficulty, easy, normal, hard, and kamikaze. I would definitely recommend the easy mode because this can be a very, very difficult game. Now, if you are traveling on the fairway, you will encounter ninjas and little groundhogs that will pop up and throw things at you. If you get into the rough, you will encounter giant mutant frogs that are completely awesome. If you get into the heavy rough or the forest, you will encounter ninjas again. There's ninjas in every one of these uh, scenarios, as well as a bird that I really hope is dropping eggs on you, but is dropping something white on you from above that can harm you. If you go through the sand trap, you now have the added challenge of a snake. And if you go through a water hazard, we got sharks! That's right, you have sharks that are very difficult to avoid and are probably best jumping over them. Once you get to the green, the game switches perspectives. You do not putt. Why? Because you don't need putting in Ninja Golf. It switches perspectives to a behind the back perspective and it reminds me a little bit of the bonus rounds in the shinobi arcade game because now you are throwing stars at a dragon a flying dragon that's shooting fireballs at you going back and forth and depending how far you are in the game is either going slow or fast once you defeat the dragon of the hole you can now move on to the next hole now graphically speaking the game is not very impressive. I did like the putt-putt dragon battles, if you will, from the back behind the back perspective. I thought that was well done. But other than that, it's very simple. Uh, some of the animations were kind of nice, but overall there wasn't anything too fancy. Music-wise, again, nothing too fancy musically in the game. But good music and good graphics? You don't need that in Ninja Golf. Anyways, the control was a little bit of a mixed bag. It is a little bit difficult to control. 
You have two buttons, a jump and an action button. The jump button is pretty self-explanatory when you are on the main levels, but the action button will vary depending on what you're doing. Now, if you're, if you're standing still or ducking or if you're jumping and you hit the action button, you will throw some throwing stars. However, you have a limited amount to throw. Once they're gone, you won't have anything to throw. So sad. I kind of wish they would have gave you unlimited throwing stars in this game, but you can pick up more as you go on. However, if you are pushing either directly to the right or left or diagonally right or left, either up or down, you will throw a kick, which is probably going to be your most useful weapon in the game. And it depends on which way you're aiming it. So you can diagonally kick up, down, or you can kick straight ahead. It reminded me the action a little bit of Karateka or Karateka, however you say it, when it came to the kicking. But trust me, this game is much better than that. I do wish they gave you the ability to do a jump kick. When you're out of throwing stars, there's nothing you can do on the offensive when jumping. I thought that might have made the game a little bit more easier and a little bit more enjoyable, but oh well, it's still pretty fun as it is. You can also pick up several items while you're running around that will just kind of magically appear at various moments in time. Enemies don't drop them. There's nowhere to discover them. They just sort of happen. And those include extra throwing stars, a shield that will give you invincibility, some health. There's also additional lives you can earn, which I only saw once when playing this, and a warp that will teleport you straight to the game. And I only saw this once during my several playing sessions of this game. So those are pretty hard to come by. It is a very tough game. As you proceed through the game, the enemies keep coming at you more and more and they keep on throwing more ninjas so on the easy level the first hole will only have one ninja at a time on the second level you can get up to two at a time and as it keeps on going you can get multiple ones including a very cool one that kind of blends in the background i think three might be the most you get at a time but they just keep coming at you at a quicker and quicker pace as you go through the game to a point where it can be a little bit frustrating but it doesn't matter because this is ninja golf and it is a blast to play i had a lot of fun with this one even though the controls some Sometimes weren't perfect. I did find that controlling it with the Proline controller controlled a little bit better than the joypad because sometimes with the joypad I'd want to move to the right but because it, it was sensing a diagonal push on me it froze my ninja temporarily where the Proline controller didn't do that. However the Proline controller is the worst controller in the history of man or at least one of the worst and can cause extreme pain. So if you can complete this game with a Proline controller I salute you because you are a ninja master on the 70. 800. Yeah, it is a very tough game. I was only able to get about halfway through it. Now, according to the manual, the last boss on the final hole might be someone different than the Flying Dragon, but I wasn't able to get that far, and I don't know anybody who has, so if you've ever beat Ninja Golf, let me know. But yeah, typically the other holes, you just face a Flying Dragon at the end, where you have unlimited throwing stars, and again, it's from the behind-the-back perspective, and your job is to hit him in the head several times until he flies away. There is no boss meter, so you just kind of have to keep on throwing, until you finally get them done. The one nice thing is they put an automatic throwing motion with this one, so as long as you're holding the button down, you will continue to throw stars until you lift up on it. This is a fairly family-friendly game. Enemies blink when defeated. There is no blood. It does have some martial arts action, of course, because it's ninja golf and you do have the throwing stars. But other than that, pretty family friendly. On eBay, this game commands quite the high price actually for an Atari 7800 game. It's not the most expensive, but it's up there. Loose copies were going for about $30 to $40 a piece. Complete copies, about $40 to $50. And there was even a new copy that went for about $80. So yeah, this game has definitely held some value. My guess is that once Atari 7800 collectors get their hands on Ninja Golf, they're not very likely to sell it. And it was one of the later releases making it even more rare. I was a big Atari 7800 fan, but when this game came out, I never saw it in any stores around me. The 7800 had pretty much died out, and the only place where you could order this game was from a catalog in the back of Radio Shack. So it was very hard to get this game, even when it came out originally, so it's especially hard to get it today. So would I recommend this? Absolutely. If you own a 7800, I would definitely recommend getting Ninja Golf. And if you don't own a 7800, you might want to get a 7800 just to play Ninja Golf. Now, I can see where this game can be polarizing. I can see where some people really, really dig it, and some people just think it's the stupidest thing ever. So I'll say this. If you think the box art is awesome, you need to play this game. And if you think it's dumb, 
well, you probably won't be impressed by the game either because the graphics aren't the greatest, the music's not the greatest, and sometimes the controls aren't the greatest. So, well, it can be very frustrating, but I just had a great time with it. I mean, it was Ninja Golf. I didn't care that I couldn't beat the game because I was having such a blast. Come on, bring on the sharks. I can take them or at least jump over them. So I would definitely recommend this. Where would I rank this as far as the 7800 games go? Well, I've only reviewed two other games. That would be Rampage and Pole Position 2. And no surprise here, it's going straight to the top of the list. This, a definite number one in my book and it might stay there for a while but we will see so there you go ninja golf for the atari 7800 i strongly recommend that you play this game if you ever have the opportunity it is something else all right guys i've reached 50 episodes i want to thank everyone who's helped make that possible i want to give a couple quick shout outs especially to people who were early supporters of me i want to thank the retro league especially for their inspiration i also want to thank jotham one of my first individual users who is a big big supporter supporter of mine when I first came out and as well as the Retro Obscure podcast who also was a big supporter early on not to mention all the other people in the Retro Junkies network that I got to know a little bit later on you've all been awesome I also want to give a very special shout out to you the viewer you know every time you leave a good comment or you click the like button or subscribe button or interact with me on Facebook or Twitter it just really really encourages me and I want to thank you for that so anyways guys thanks for giving me a little part of your day and I look forward to seeing you next time right here on the No Swear Gamer. Take care, everybody, and go play some Ninja Golf.